Guys, I'm teaming up with my good friend, retired Navy SEAL Jocko Wilnick for something real special. Jocko started Jocko Fuel when he found out the supplements he was buying for himself and his family were filled with heavy metals and ingredients he was unaware of. He wanted a line of supplements and consumables that had all of the good, effective ingredients and none of the bad. So we made it happen. I got set up with all of the key products and we want to do the same for you. Jocko Go Energy Drinks for clean, sustainable energy. Jocko Milk Protein for 30 grams of delicious grass-fed protein, plus a full line of supplements to support mood, focus, hydration, joints, and more. Jocko Fuel Supplements are scientifically formulated and made with ingredients that are clinically tested. They are better for you options with no artificial flavors or sweeteners, no added sugar, and no gray area ingredients or banned substances. It's clean fuel fuel with help compromise. And right now, you can get 20% off when you use code CHAIL at jockofuel.com. Or if it's easier, just click on the link below. I'm taking Holly home. And how did we get there? You know, a picture's worth a thousand words. It's the whole reason we do the face off. The whole reason we face them off. You don't even have to put a caption over it. You don't have to have a famous announcer. You don't got to bring Joe Rogan and pay him a bunch of money. Just put him up there, take a still, put it out. We'll start to judge their level of fitness. Start to do it right there. How serious did they take this? What was camp like? Let me see their abs, right? It's one of these things, but right or wrong, whether that's placebo and we're not as smart as we think we are, that's why we do it. Kayla got on that scale today. I didn't know who it was. I did not recognize her. And it was one of those things where within three seconds, oh my God, Kayla, Kayla, of course, who else? But... It did take me those three seconds, and I did have to ultimately ask myself, well, who else would it be? All right. She looked great. She looked great. Guys, 135 pounds. I want to rework this just in case you're not aware. When she won the Olympics and then went back and won the Olympics again, that was at 172 pounds. It's important that you understand that because she had to cut down to 55. She had to cut down to 55 because there's nobody to fight at 172 pounds. There was nobody to fight at 155. They created the division because of her. She knew to be in any meaningful position to negotiate, to be able to go to Bellator, to an ultimate fighting championship, she had to be at 145. And I remember an interview she did. She said, I haven't weighed that since I was a 17-year-old junior in high school. So she slipped down there one time, hit that weight for about 10 minutes, just enough to get on and off a scale, but I didn't see it. So I'm speaking from a personal standpoint. I have never seen her. I've seen her at 155. See her at the Olympics at 170 plus. I seen her in MMA at 155, and then I saw her at 135. So when I tell you I did not recognize her, this is without exaggeration. Now, what does the weight have to do? Well, nothing positive, and also nothing negative. We're here for an opportunity and nothing else. I mean, there was an opportunity. There wasn't a fight with Holly Holm for 600 grand in UFC 300. Yeah, and if those things aren't here. Kayla Harrison at 135 isn't here. But the other side of the coin, do not let anybody tell you or influence you that she's going to be tired or run down. If Holly gets the jump on her, do not buy into the, the weigh-in nonsense. A 24-hour weigh-in, which is what this is, you have an entire day, which actually turns into about 32 hours. There's absolute and full recovery. And I only offer you that so that you understand whatever version of Kayla you've come accustomed to seeing, whether you recognize her on the scale or not, you can expect that same level of performance. But is that going to be enough to deal with one of the all-time greats? I mean, Holly Holm is an all-time great. You see these kickboxers that are doing so well, Adesanya, I'll bring Surreal Gone into it. Should I, should I throw Francis and Gano into that? Should I put him in this boxer kickboxer realm since that's what he wanted to be and he sucks at grappling? Like, would that be fair? Jose Aldo to a degree, even though he had a black belt in jujitsu. I mean, I'm trying to think, right? Like, we've seen these kickboxers really come on and really do a good job and really be strong. I would put Jamal Hill. I think his kickboxing is in the forefront. The original kickboxer to come over and do well in MMA, yes, it was Marie Smith back in the 90s, but from Marie Smith all the way, it was Holly Holm. Holly Holm is the trendsetter here, guys. Holly Holm is the one that showed the strikers that if they're willing to work hard enough and open their mind, they can achieve in this sport as well. Holly Holmes started all of this. 
for the Adesanyas, for the Pierres, for the Surreal Gons, for the Francis Ngannos. But she doesn't get credit for that. She doesn't even get remembered for that. Now that I've said it to you, you're not arguing with me. You're conceding to me, and I'm completely right. But you never thought about it. And I only say that to you to let you know we underestimate how good Holly is. And we underestimate the value of Holly knowing this weight class, being able to get to it comfortably, meaning she can put all of her focus in the gym into defeating her opponent, and her opponent could not. Kayla only has so much time and so many calories that she can burn in a day. And she had to focus a lot of that time and a lot of those calories into jogging, into riding a stationary bike to get those calories down to get that weight off. Does that matter? Yeah, you know what? It does. And you want to know why it does? And normally it wouldn't. Normally it's just a talking point that some guy that didn't know the sport would bring up to try to get clicks on his YouTube channel. Do you want to know why it matters here? Because this fight was just made. This fight was made seven weeks ago. Neither one of these girls knew they were going to be facing the other. Kayla did not know she was going to have to pull down to 135. She didn't know she was going to have to take on a decorated kickboxer. She didn't know she was going to have to take on a future Hall of Famer. She didn't know any of those things. So time is of the essence, and her time was used to make weight. Holly's time was used. Holly spent a lot of time with John Jones preparing for this. Nobody understands range like John Jones. Nobody. Nobody has the strategies to control range like John Jones. And I will say again, nobody. And that's the only thing Holly has to do. Now, it's easier said than done, but make no mistake, Holly Holmes prepared for this fight. And you wanna know who I'm taking? I'm taking an upset and I'm taking Holly.